Welcome to the bold analysis. I asked our viewers in our previous video a question and I was asking why is it that Kenya Kwanzaa members of parliament or why is it that members of parliament kept off the housing levy debate in the National Assembly? I could not get those answers and of course I even explained to you the way there was an attempt to compromise the ICT infrastructure because some MPs didn't even want to be captured live uh, contributing to the housing levy debate. And true to that, we have found the answers. Some uh, reports are emerging from the UDO corridors on what exactly is causing that go slow on the housing levy debate in the National Assembly. Before you get into that, I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our video. We are done with our February uh, project. The project we are now doing is 100 subscribers challenge per day. Yes, if you can gift us 100 subscribers uh, challenge, uh, if you can subscribe, just confirm that to share subscribe, I'm going to watch now and too. Then uh, you will also subscribe, click the notification bell that just down there. So that whenever I publish any video, we'll always get to be notified and will not miss any of our good videos. I asked, and was clearly asking UDMPs, why exactly they kept off. Just look at these two videos. Um, you will. This is what I, I, I was asking the question about. I will be consistent and I shall remain so. Not because... I do not like the policies that are laid down by Kenya Kwanza government, but because I am in this house to pursue the interest of the people I do represent. Malfunction. So this will go to her. Just give her the microphone where she is. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And I believe the ICT personnel will all be reviewing our gadgets before we come into sessions so that I'm not experiencing frustration which I've experienced uh, for the last four and a half hours but I thank you for understanding. So that is when Nani was talking, that is when Gadonwa Mushaba was talking and also the women rep from Homa Bay uh, when the two were talking the National Assembly the two uh, that session that happened on Thursday Parliament People were accountable and the seats were empty. What exactly happened? What, exa what, what happened will blow your mind. In what is seen as a departure from the customary norm, the ruling coalition was supposed to hold a parliamentary PG before the session, before they, they resume the house. So, the, whenever parliament goes for recess, before they come up with the House Business Committee, before the House Business Committee is established, the first meeting that happens is a parliamentary PG. The last, and, and, and that PG, according to what the UDA guys are saying, is that it was even mobilized in the formal official UDA uh, channels through the UDA communication channels involving the WhatsApp. But last minute, last minute, that um, PG backfired and uh, it was never held. Remember, the objective of that PG was to whip the members of parliament to debate on these two bills, these two key bills. Number one was the amendments on housing levy. When the High Court termed the housing levy unconstitutional um, on the grounds that it was, not, it was not based on any act of parliament, the majority leader Kimani Chungwa retreated with the executive team to try to mend those gaps that had been pointed out so that it's taken back to the parliament, it's approved, and then it goes through. That is the first bill that was actually supposed to be done. And when the parliament resumed, 
The first business was to, was to ensure that they pass it. But even as that was going on, the MPs were supposed to be furnished by the final copy, what exactly had been done, what had been corrected, so that they would actually go to parliament and defend it. Now, what they are saying is that because that PG never happened, and for some reasons people don't know why, the MPs were left in the dark. And quite a majority of them did not know what even to defend. So that is a bit of it. That is one of it that they didn't have an idea because there was not shared. The second, um, the second bill that was also supposed to be discussed was the National Government Administration uh, Amendment. This bill was the one that was creating that was altering was amendment on the national security council to achieve some three changes number one to create the national security advisor that was part of it to clip the powers of ag so that official government seal instruments of power are are moved from the office of attorney general to the um, uh, to the state house team that is the public service commission or rather they are kept under in the office of the president, that is the public seal, and also to ensure that um, they streamline the inter the working relationship, rather the cooperation, the interdependence between the attorney general and the executive. What happened? Because there was no synergy. In fact, a PG is supposed to synchronize those two arms of government, the National Assembly and the executive. What happened? When the first meeting happened and Attorney General uh, Muturi was appearing in the National Assembly, he came out and ripped off the executive saying that he has not been party to some of the deliberations or some of the decisions that were made by the executive. And it showed how UDA approached Parliament after that traces a bit of disorganized, to use a better word, a less harsher word, they were a bit disorganized on that. So it didn't, it didn't, it didn't really go through. And um, just listen to this. I think this is a statement from, uh, this was what happened, transpired in Parliament at some point, on uh, this issue of uh, Eji Muturi. Uh, both to the Solicitor General uh, and uh, the other state councils either specifically or generally when they do when they do what they do be it to appear in court surely they do it uh, purely on the basis of the law and the evidence available they also exercise independence when uh, we give and we are designated as the principal legal advisor to government in giving that advice, we do not consult uh, another another person in government. At what do you, uh, perhaps, of, of course, uh, uh, I've, I've spoken to some people and they tell me, uh, what do you think yourself? I say, no, 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 I've come to ask you because you are the expert in this area. Uh, what you tell me is I'll, I'll make a decision. For me, my position is as principal legal advisor to government, on the basis of the law and the constitution, it doesn't matter what anybody feels, we state them and we, and we do so in writing. So that uh, when I attend meetings, and the chairman raised the issue of me attending in cabinet, when I attend meetings, I'm merely in attendance, that time I'm not advising. And I've told everybody, who cares to, to listen that, uh, yeah, here we are in a meeting. When you want advice, please write so that you know, you say specifically what it is you want to be advised on. So that it cannot be that uh, uh, everywhere people are attending a, a marriage ceremony, I'm advising there. No, no, no. And I'm sure you may have noticed that I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, feasible in uh, such functions because uh, there's, no, there's no work for me there. If we go, we maybe just go to dance and maybe eat and drink. 
uh, enjoy with everybody. When it is advised, it is independent. Indeed, when we, when we are also reviewing international agreements and treaties and conventions, we have to do it purely on the... And so, ladies and gentlemen, you would then understand very well that the last time there was a parliamentary PG was some two days before the State of Nation address. And when that PG was held, the MPs confronted the president and told him, Mr. President, things are tough, the ground is hostile because Kenyans are feeling that administration is out of touch with the reality. Can we do something? And out of, um, you know, in William Bruto's approach, he dismissed those MPs and told them that this is not the right time to be popular. It is time, it is fine to be unpopular now. In politics, you will know when to be popular. So I tend to think that, that even on calling this, they knew very well that uh, the same environment would emerge of government not getting his way. And so, instead, and after that PG failed, William Ruto was in Muranga. And he made a statement that was really a bit irritating, but again it's a pointer making orders to Parliament that make sure by Tuesday you pass it without questions. I want you to listen to that video. Munasema tupange hiyo kazi? Isonge na mana hiyo? Tupange na hawa wabunge? Na mina ambia hawa wabunge. Sasa sheria hile iko bunge. Ambaye ni ya housing. Hile kotini ilisema tupitishe. Tunataka by Tuesday iwe imekamilika. Vijana ni wengi wanataka kuenda kufanya kazi. Si vijana muko? Si munataka kazi? Ebu nione wale vijana hawana kazi kwa hii mkutano? Sasa wewe wa mumbi. Ukienda kungedhi ya uko bunge na hawa watu wanangwajea kazi Hawa watu watakuzamisha Siwui jamaa pitisha hiyo sheria asubui Muna mpatia amuri ya pitisha asubui Na mapema Na wache masuali mingi Ama na mragani Wale wanasema sheria ipitisho watu wapate kazi nione Very good Muna sema tupange hiyo kazi Isonge na muna hiyo Tupange na hawa wabunge. Na mina ambia hawa wabunge. Sasa sheria hile iko bunge. Ambaye ni ya housing. Hile kotini ilisema tupitishe. Tunataka by Tuesday iwe imekamilika. Vijana ni wengi wanataka kuenda kufanya kazi. Si vijana muko? Si munataka kazi? Ebu nione wale vijana hawana kazi kwa hii mkutano? Sasa wewe wa mumbi. Ukienda kungedhi ya uko bunge na hawa watu wanangwajea kazi. Hawa watu watakuzamisha. Siwui jamaa pitisha hiyo sheria asubui? Muna mpatia amuri ya pitisha asubui? Na mapema? Na wache masuali mingi? Ama na mragani? Wale wanasema sheria ipitisho watu wapate kazi nione? Very good. In this video, William Ruto is ordering UDA MPs that make sure you approve that housing levy, you pass that, that housing levy without many questions. And that confirms what the sources are saying, that the president seems to be uh, insinuating that that housing levy need to pass without questions. You don't need to question. You need to see, already it has been done, it is tabled in parliament, it is passed. And that is why I told you guys that many I sampled uh, responses from Kimani Chungwa and Johanna Ngeno and some UDA members that were defending that housing levy, there was nothing quality. In fact, they were just echoing what the president is saying in political rallies, running the emotional appeal on that housing levy. And as to whether they had really done their homework is something that could not be done. Now, what then happened, and what is then coming out, is that the caucuses have been activated with whipping their members on different grounds so that they pass the bill. The big question here is, 
Why is the executive suppressing an extensive debate on housing levy? Why do you think they don't want a debate? They don't want questions. <laughs> you know, that is very suspect. The fact that someone is saying, pass it, bila maswali mingi, is very suspect. And that is what should worry us as a country. And that is what should worry all those MPs. That is what I want us to look at. I think I'm seeing four uh, possibilities uh, that are uh, dangling in William Ruto's mind. Number one, the fact that these members of parliament have been shy on defending this housing levy, even in their grassroots events, is a red flag. And maybe his handlers are telling him that these MPs are not fully backing this housing levy. I, I know every Sunday they attend events. Even today there are some Mount Kenya events, there are some events, burials. You will not see, you will not hear MPs, not even that Deputy President Gede Geshagwa. You will not see them defending housing levy in an event where people are seated. They would rather go, drive through to the center of the market, get some rowdy crowd, and then talk about it. And the only person that will defend it is the president himself. The other people when they attend the events, especially events that are not attended by the president, will not hear housing levy. I have listened to speeches. Today there are three events in Mount Kenya. There is burial of Deputy DIG, Kingori. There was burial of 17, mass burial of 17 victims of illicit brew. And then a memorial service in Kipiripiri for Amos, late Amos Wako's wife. Out of scare, those events, William Reed is not attending. If you listen to those, you will not hear anyone, even UDA leaders that are attending those events, talking about the housing levy. But Wakiwa Karibu na Rais, they will always say, you know, support to make him happy that they are supporting. And I think that is why, clearly they are thinking that if we entertain the debate, there is a high possibility that even most of our members will continue asking questions. Number two, I deeply suggest, I highly suggest that the Kenya Kwanzaa team have not fully conformed with the suggestions that came from the High Court. I am not a prophet, but I'm a bit convinced to some percentage. There are so many questions. There are things that uh, High Court asked. High Court said, you cannot just tax money from Kenyans, from employed Kenyans, and not target and, and don't pick from employed to fund a project that is supporting all. And according to them, it was economic injustice just to raid the, the pay slips of those who are employed. And they were told, you must make sure that the levy is all inclusive. Number two, they've also been asked to create a legal framework on how this money is, go is going to be managed. What used to happen initially was that the money was collected by a KRA taxed, then taken to the exchequer. Then from there, from that exchequer, everyone, someone who wants to build their houses will go deep his hands, take his billions, go and launch those projects. Now what parliament, what the court said is, you must get a framework, you must create a board, just like NHIF. Just like NHIF, people are being, a levy is being chopped. And from that levy, you know very well it's going to NHIF. And from that, it's supposed to be used to pay uh, health finance, to finance your health burdens. That is what the High Court. Now, I, I clearly see that probably, that I've just mentioned too, and there were so many, the Kenya Kwanzaa team have not fully uh, conformed to those requirements. Number three, the debate is being silenced to suppress the media coverage on it. Remember, I, I, I agree that for the first time, if there is a, a policy or a project that has been extensively discussed in this country is housing levy. For the last eight months, since it was introduced in June last year, we are in February, we're almost getting to March. We are still talking about it. And it tells you the way it has cut 
across. Then lastly, I support what Kimani, not Kimani, um, uh, Gadhanu Mshamba once said, that there seems to be some inside push that we want to get that money. And people don't want to ask these questions because that money, as much as we are clothing it as money being collected to build houses, perhaps it's not even for houses. So I, there is deep conviction that maybe something is not being laid bare. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my take. Remember, even Azimio also did not hold PG. So a lot is going on. And we're waiting to see. But again, um, if you don't have the majority, even if you hold a PG and whip members, last time they, hold, they held a PG, they tried to whip members, all MPs went to parliament and they were bribed left, right and center. And they passed that housing levy and finance bill without asking any question. So truly, it should worry Wetangula that the president who is head of executive is going to a political rally and ordering his MPs to pass a bill without question. It should worry Wetangula, but I know it cannot. That's my take. I'm coming back with um, Uhuru's presence in Mount Kenya. Deep, very important. Make sure you subscribe and don't miss that one here.